Hello friends and welcome to another episode of My Bucket List Day. So this episode, I have to be honest, is not what I planned. I had a whole other topic planned. However, with the, uh, the comments from the last two episodes, I felt that it would be appropriate for me to address some of those, as well as give you a few updates. And then we're going to get into some, uh, something that it's pretty much for all you ladies out there. This is an upgrade that I think you'll all appreciate, and uh, you'll be tapping on your husband's shoulder saying, let's do that to our unit so you can uh, enjoy the same benefits that I am right now. So stay tuned, take a look at this intro, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. First, I want to start off by saying how appreciative I am of all the kind words and comments that uh, all of you left me uh, for those last two videos, especially the one where I uh, sadly totaled the last unit but persevered and here I am with a new unit and back on the road and creating this channel for all of you. And a special thanks out to all of you that have subscribed to this channel. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It's, uh, it just means a lot to me. And I'm, I'm especially grateful that I've been able to help a lot of you uh, with the, those last two videos. So I thought it'd also be appropriate for me to comment kind of on a global level. Uh, a few of the questions that came through, there's some common threads in there. And uh, one of them is uh, the insurance. So just to uh, clarify the insurance. Yes, it took a long time, but I did have full um, coverage, or I should say full-time uh, RV coverage. So the insurance company is well aware of that. I didn't have any issues there. Where the issue came into and where it took a long time is I actually had a policy that was called a full replacement policy. So should anything happen to my rig within the first three years, I get a 100% replacement uh, unit. So if, let's say, three years from now, this unit gets totaled, they'll actually go out and buy me a brand new unit. So that's the kind of coverage I have with GEICO. And uh, it took them a while because I think I was one of the first people that had a claim that had this particular policy. But long story short, GEICO has been awesome to work with. The people were uh, great, kind, and courteous, and fairly responsive. So just to let you know, I did have a $1,000 deductible. That was no big deal to me. Um, and uh, the new unit that they got me was actually $18,000 more than the original unit that I purchased and they actually had to write a check for that difference. So everything is great, can't complain, and uh, would highly recommend GEICO. Again, they do have full timers insurance and uh, it's a fantastic policy and the people there have been great. The second thing I want to address is uh, the modification I had in the last episode. I talked about putting some rollers on the back of the unit and modifying that a little bit. Well, one of the comments I got from one of you, we won't mention their name, but apparently works for a manufacturer that makes chassis and frames for these rigs, um, and they make them for multiple brands. Anyway. Uh, I removed that comment there to protect their identity, but they shared with me that that modification I was planning might, not would, but might uh, cause an issue if it was to uh, bottom out somewhere else and those rollers would catch it and prevent the back end from coming out, but it might cause an area somewhere else on the frame. So this person um, suggested another idea and suggested that I reinforce it a different way and like many of you suggested, instead of rollers, was to add a skid plate. So I'm continuing the conversation with this person and a few of you out there as well that I am to me through Facebook and gave me some suggestions, all great suggestions, and I appreciate it. And so I'm leaning away from the rollers uh, based on all this new information 
and probably going to reinforce some other steel brackets in there and cross members in there and then put a uh, skid plate on top of all of that and uh, again lowering it down so it's not going to catch the back panel so that's kind of the update i'll keep you posted as i do the upgrade but wanted to let you know uh, that big update so as i mentioned this video is primarily going to be for the ladies um, one of the upgrades i did to this uh, coach was uh, in my water system i have an ice maker on board and I wanted to have quality ice, but more importantly, I wanted to have quality water, but also soften the water so it improved the quality of not only the water that you drink, but when you're taking a shower, doing laundry, things of that nature, it, uh, it's a world of difference. I can tell you, after I installed the system, taking a shower has been incredible. You lather up better, uh, you get out, your skin's not dry like an alligator. Um, I'm not one for putting a lot of lotion on, sorry girls I'm just a guy thing guys don't do lotion much however um, don't really need it now with the water softener on board huge difference in the feeling of your clothes um, you don't use as much fabric softener and uh, it and laundry detergent so it's more efficient that way so instead of me just talking all about it let me show you what I did so uh, I apologize Joanne's not here today while I filmed this part so I'm having to do it myself here we go. So here we are starting at the water source at the RV park. Uh, we're basically it's a spigot like they all have. And what I installed there. So Okay. But the first thing is I have a pre-filter of 20 microns. And you're going to see that we're going to step down from 20 microns all the way down to 1 micron. Uh, but you'll see that here in a second. The blue water hose coming in. And coming up to the water bay. So the first thing is another quick connect right here going into a 5 micron filter as you can see there and then I come up through a little hose and then I made this section here just a pipe connection here with a shutoff valve. Now this uh, is not recommended but I do it and I'll tell you why. I've got a smart meter on here as you can see here and the smart meter is connected to my internal system that uh, I have water detectors and under the sinks and uh, behind the uh, water bay here should I ever get a leak those alarms will go off and it'll send a signal here to turn this off automatically so this is not a necessity but it's something I added to mine so then the water comes through here and then goes down to my flow meter. And I monitor how much water, uh, per how many gallons I go through here, and I'll tell you that why in a moment. But then I go down into a pressure regulator, and this pressure regulator, uh, I keep it set at 50 pounds. And then from the pressure, pr pressure regulator, it goes into the stainless steel garden hose and into th the coach. So this is the normal uh, inlet for the Nautilus system here on my particular coach and where you can set and change all the valves based on if you're dry camping, filling, uh, winterizing, all that kind of stuff as well as sanitizing. Okay, so also while we're here you'll notice that there's another filter. This is the filter that came with the unit and this particular filter I've got a one micron filter in it. Now, what I've done is I put all these filters in here to kind of clean the water up. Again, we have bad water here. But I've also added a water softener system. So you'll see right here, there's another filter. And then there's this big tank. This is my water softener, the Pro Aqua water softener. I'm going to get a view on the other side of that here in a second. But again, in Florida, we have very hard water and high calcium. So what I found in just about two months period of time, I started getting really big calcium deposits up at my faucets as well as at the water pump. And the water pump was running a little funky. So I decided to take the water pump apart, clean that out and realized, okay, I can't deal with this. I need to have soft water and in the unit. And uh, so that's what I did is I invested in this water softener. Let me go on the other side and show you all that. Okay, I'm inside the basement area right now, and uh, you see we have the Pro Aqua water softener and the other filter here. 
So what happens is right here, this is coming in from the Nautilus system, going into this filter, coming up, coming through here, down into the water softener. Then this comes back out and this goes out to that other filter outside that came with the coach into a one micron filter. And then from there goes into the coach. Uh, again, this filter too also, I put a one micron filter in here as well. And uh, the reason I have that flow meter in there is this Pro Aqua water softener needs to be recharged about every uh, 16,000 gallons. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, every 1,600 gallons. And so that water meter out there, I monitor how many gallons I've got in it. So far, I think there's uh, right around 900 gallons. So I'm s no, five, 600 gallons away from uh, basically recharging this water system, or this uh, softener system. And to do that is very simple. I'm gonna do a video on it, but I'll tell you how it works right now. Is this filter, I shut the water off obviously, take everything off, or shut everything off, and then I take this filter out. I turn this, and this is why this is bungee cord here. I've designed this to turn upside down, and I'll fill it full of salt, turn it upside down, and then I'll change the connection here, water coming in, and change this connection to go into the exit of here, and the entrance of here will drain out, and probably drain out into the sewer, or if you're in a gravel area, it'll drain out there. And I'll run that for 30 to 40 minutes to clean this tank out, and then especially, and I'll wait till all the salt is gone in here, and then when that's all done, I'll turn this back around, put the filter back on it, change this back to the configuration you see here, and this tank has then been recharged and good for another 1,600 gallons. So, now, to prove that the system works, we're going to do a little water test, and you'll see how well this does work. So here we are at the spigot. I'm going to fill the cup. If I can. Fill the cup if I can, full of water. There we go. You see, that says outside. Hopefully that shows up. So now we're gonna fill the inside water. Okay. So now we're gonna test the water. And I hope you can see this. Well, we have some test strips. This is by uh, J&W Testing. It's for drinking water. And then we have another one for water hardness. And this actually does test water hardness, but I get this one because it's specific to that. And usually when I go to a new RV park, I test for water hardness right away. I kind of get an idea how much the uh, water software is gonna be working to clear up my water. One more thing, on the side of the bottle is these little gauges that you uh, compare the, te the test strips to. So this one's the hard water, we're going to test that one first. And uh, we'll compare the little test strip to this and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've got everything set up here. Here's the hard water, this is outside tap, and I thought I'd make it interesting and get a fresh bottle of Zephyr Hills uh, that you normally buy at a store to see where everything is. And then obviously we're going to test the water quality of all three. But first we're going to start with the hard water. So with the hard water you put it in there for two seconds and then wait 15 seconds and then measure that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of these individually. So I'm going to one, two, take that out, we'll lay it flat. And then we'll do the inside. One, two, take that out, lay it flat. Whoops. And then the bottled water. One, two, lay it flat, and uh, 15 seconds is uh, coming up. So we'll try to compare it. Now, I hope this is all in frame, but as we compare this, we see this is it's looking more right around here, between here and here. So. 50 and 120 BPMs. Oh, now it's getting darker. 
So I hope that glare, or you're not seeing that glare, but I'm, it's looking like 120 or close to 120 BPMs. So let's look at the inside tap water. Uh, we're between 0 and 25. I'm going to say closer to 25. Yeah, 25. That's probably a good solid 25. And then the Zephyr Hills bottled water is, yeah, right around, around 25. Yeah, about the same as the tap water. So as far as the hard water is concerned, um, the tap water and the bottled water are pretty much the same. Quite a bit harder for the out of the tap. Now I will say, when it comes to Florida, this RV park isn't so bad. I've seen some that are really, really bad. In fact, I've seen some where it's gone off the chart over here and it's almost a bright orange. That's how hard the water is. So now we're gonna test. I'm gonna try to do this without stopping the video at all. Now we're gonna test the quality of the water. Now, same thing. You dip it for two seconds, then you wait 60 seconds and you compare it. This is going to be a little harder to show on camera, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, there's the color chart on the side of that. So we're going to drop two seconds. One, two. Let's lay that flat for 60 seconds. Let's go to the next one. One, two. Drop that out. And the bottled water. Now we're going to wait for 60 seconds. Um, got a little timer going here. So I can already see them changing um, the water out of the spigot. And by the way, I don't know if you can see this, but on this bottle, it's got areas down here of the colors and it's got white or dark boxes around where it's ideal, where you should be for each of your water. So hopefully that's going to show up there and it's not out of focus. So I'm going to step around here and we're going to try to test that. So here is the outside water, very hard. You can see that's over here, which is consistent from the hard water we just checked. Uh, we're right around here for the bromine. Then the uh, what you're really going to find with this water out of the tap when you take showers, you're not going to lather up as much and your skin's going to come out dry. And here. So here, range of the chlorine is high, but range. And that, perfect perfect nitrates. Perfect nitrates, yeah. And the chlorine, the range of And fluoride, perfect. And the chlorine, the range of the second chlorine, the range of the chlorine, the range of the chlorine, the range of the um, pretty much the same as the tap. All the way across, as I can lay it there, maybe you can see it better that way. Yeah, this obviously is doing very, very well too. So it's just a little bit better than uh, my tap water on the carbonate, as well as the alkaline. It's just a smidgen better on the alkaline. So, I've got about, uh, as I mentioned, Eight nine hundred gallons through that water softener already. It's rated for sixteen hundred gallons, and the tap water, tap water, and the bottled water are really, really close. Far exceeds the water right up from the pipe. I can tell you when I installed this system, you really noticed it in the washer and dryer, or the washer on the clothes came out much uh, softer and uh, cleaner. And in the shower, you lathered up a lot more, and you came out didn't need as much lotion. So, ladies, that's probably something you're gonna enjoy by having a water softener system in your unit. So that's it on the test. Hopefully that came out and uh, let's finish this up. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, and looking back at the testing, um, that didn't come out so great. You couldn't really see the test strips against the bottle and I apologize for that. The glare out of the window it was a little too bright and uh, I can assure you the uh, what I tried to show you was true and accurate, even though the water quality at this park isn't so bad. The uh, tap, or the water out of my tap was much, much better and was pretty much equal to the bottled water, the Zephyr Hills spring water that you go buy at the grocery store. So, um, 
very happy with the water quality here, and I apologize that the uh, that part of this episode wasn't the greatest, but I wanted to keep it in there for authenticity uh, to show you that it really is an improvement in the water quality. So, now we're at that point where we're about to play the Patriot Games. So, I gotta tell you, um, from past episodes, I've had hundreds and hundreds of you uh, put in your guesses, and uh, many of you are right. I just have to point out, please do not put your guess in the comments below. Click the link below that takes you to the contest page, and there's a form that you fill out that asks you for your name, email, what your guess is, and what episode you're guessing about. Uh, please do that. That is an automated system I put in there. And then when we get closer to the uh, drawing of the contest, there will be an algorithm in there that goes through and starts searching. And the more you enter, the more chances you have to win. Take a look at this video and hopefully you can figure out where it's at. Okay, I'll admit, that one was kind of easy. You should all pretty much get that one. Um, while there wasn't a name in it, it's kind of a famous area. Lots of people go there. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to give you any more hints. You should uh, fill out the form. Click the link. Don't put it in the comments. Click the link below to enter your guests and get a chance to win the uh, Patriot Games prize on July 4th. So with that, I think that's about it for today in this episode. Again, thank you all for your comments. Keep them coming. I'm doing my best to respond to all of you. I think I've responded to just under 900 of them. <laughs> and I've got about 900 more to go. So I will catch up, I promise. I will try to respond to all of you. And uh, keep liking and subscribing. That helps me a whole lot with the uh, algorithms here at YouTube. And I can't appreciate it enough that you subscribe and like. And don't forget that little bell so you're notified the next time I launch a video. And when do I launch videos? Yes, you're right. Every Wednesday, hump day, and every Sunday. So thanks again for watching and subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Make it a great day. Goodbye.